welcome to my fire inside an afi podcast uh our streaming decided to update and now i can't add uh our transition smoothly it won't acknowledge it maybe it's because we're recording right now oh well i'm your host mtr as always christopher catastrophic christopher catastrophic christopher all right, nice. Uh, Nando Calrissian. Well, not always. Nando's not always here. Hey, but I'm notorious here. Nando Calrissian. Yo, there it is. Can you Throwing the notorious it? or fiery Fernando. <laughs> fada, fada, Nando, I'm the fire fada, fada, that is fada, inside. <laughs> you, you are. I don't know why I'm not switching the camera to you guys. Let's see. Here we go. Turn you guys on right now. Hey, there they are. Wave to the camera, you guys. Jazz hands. Wow, Chris, like that. I just realized your guys' camera is like super crooked. It's I'm going to try to fix that while you guys talk. Let's go ahead. Let's talk about what we're going to be talking about this week. The concerts that we went to. We saw AFI with Rise Against and Antiflag. Yes, we did. Uh, in Irvine. Yep. What did you think of the show? Well, Notorious? <laughs> well, catastrophic. <laughs> <laughs> uh, now that you bring it up. Well, the venue, it was the first time going to this venue. It was an open, open air, open door, open, no, no closed venue. Um, it was nice and large stage for the general admission. You could see them from anywhere, be at any point, and be good to see them. So the sound quality, the visual quality, all that was perfect. And Anti Flag played on a really, really good opening set. I will agree. Anti Flag was was really good. Um, you could tell they were trying to get the the crowd motivated since they were the first band on. And it's always hard to be that first band on at a big concert and stuff, and you got to get the crowd pumped up. But they did a pretty good job, and they, they sounded clean. They had a good set. Um, well, with that being said, it was, I found it was very interesting, too, because I went ahead, as I normally do before I go to a show, I always check the sets of the bands, and they pulled out a song that I wasn't expecting, Should I Stay or Should I Go? Yes, they did covered. A, did a great cover. Of, of, and kind they of, have been playing. They were playing that song on the tour. I didn't see it at all when I checked the set list. I could be wrong. But and it's one of the enders too. Yeah, they, they've been playing that one. But yeah, it was it was cool, man. It was interesting. Uh, I thought Anti Flag, even for some of the songs that I was like, this isn't really going to translate as well live. It still definitely kept the energy yeah. very very high. Yeah, they did a great job of trying to get the crowd going, get the pit going. Like you know, they were really just trying to just like, come on, you guys, you know, let's do it. I know um, someone we were familiar with. I won't name names. Doesn't like or didn't like Anti Flag, and um, I remember he would always say, "Man, I hate their speeches and blah blah blah." I'm like, yeah, they do. We're really political and they make a lot of speeches. Like, I just want to see them play, but at the same time, you got to have like a, and maybe at certain times I've seen I've seen Anti Flag play. I don't know a ton of times. Like, I don't know, maybe not a ton, maybe like eight times, but like. Uh, when I see him, there has been a couple of shows where they were just too. There was a little bit way too, too preachy. preachy. Yeah, yeah, and that's when they were and like headlining. And that's stuff what and happens that. when you're a political band, mm-hmm. though. It's really yeah. it hits all you got. You got to mm-hmm. have a mix of both, though. You have to have a good flow and progression of songs, and they still had that. So, and they still have that. With their, I think they've played long enough to know like this. They needed a good balance. Uh, let's go. Let me go ahead and pull up the set list for uh, for Anti Flag. Cause I know that, like I said, it felt it felt it was a solid set list. It was something I I was truly surprised about. I was like, oh, okay, like this is this is great. This is gonna be you know a very 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 solid show. By the way, they're still they're still on tour. Just recently, they're playing in uh, Germany right now. So good on you, Anti Flag. Good on you. So they're here we go. The five too. points. Uh, the Press Corp. Uh, fuck police brutality, turncoat, all the poison, all the pain, city burns, this is the end, uh, American attraction, die for the government, should I stay or should I go, and uh, Brendenburg Gate. I uh, will wait. Actually, I was pleasantly surprised at that particular song, too, because it, I don't know, it didn't, it doesn't feel like it translates that well from recording. To, I didn't think it was going to translate good recording it, to live. It, was, it is a weird but song. It was a, to but end it on. ended up being. Yeah, exactly. But it ended up being really good. It ended up being really chanty, and people were kind of singing it. I feel like you know? if you don't know the song, and if it's not like you're not the headliner, no one's going to be singing this. And I felt like, now that you mentioned it, yeah, like, and I remember now, it was kind of. I thought it was a weird song to end on because 
they're trying to they were like forcing it you know it was better than what they originally were ending the but set I like their song. passion they were they were ending the set on uh one trillion dollars which is oh, yeah. an yeah. acoustic they're, song yeah they're yeah, I so know. thank the lord they didn't end on that that's true but let me go ahead Just bring it down for the next band yeah exactly <laughs> So let me go ahead. I'm going to play uh, Brendenburg Gate right now, which uh, I thought American Attraction w- was a was a great, great song. I thought I thought that was really cool that they went I thought ahead. they had the best sound. You know what? They did. They did have <laughs> a really good the sound. Best sound. They did have a really good sound. Here we go. Yeah. Uh, let's jump on into Brendenburg Gate. By the way, this is with Tim Armstrong. So that is a little preview of Brendenburg Gate by Anti Flag. Chris, you were going to say something while we were listening to the song, man. Right? Yeah, I don't remember what I was going to say, <laughs> but I, I will say they did they did a pretty good job. And it's they the thing is they play with bands that are a lot more popular than them, I think. And for them to like, I think play that well, and I think there was a solid three bands. You know yes, it was a solid. Three and I was bands. surprised that there were more on the on the tag. And we were talking about that too. It's like, man, back in the day, you used to pay for a show like that. And there'd be at least five. five. Yeah. And for that, I think for a big, almost festival-like show, I would expect more, like yeah. six, seven bands at least. So, yeah. and it's for as much as we paid too. But um, I guess we're paying for food trucks to be there, and we're paying for K Rock to play AFI outside, and not even long set of the area. Uh, yeah. Uh, to play. Yeah. That, well. Yeah. And that was kind of weird too, because it felt like the, the setup times. It felt like anti flag set yeah, was longer. Yeah, it, 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 it felt like uh, the setup times were very like spread out, far from none. Yeah, so like your downtime was like thirty minute turnarounds, and that felt a little. If, weird. The, yeah, that's, that is true. It that, felt a little weird. The transitions were long. For, yeah, but uh, anti flag, good on you guys. I, I I liked I liked their set. Even like I said, this particular song that I didn't care for record wise. Ended up translating really good live. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It, it, it was cool. It, it, it was a high note. I was like, "All right, like that's awesome. I love it." But that's that's not the podcast for Anti Flag. Although there is an Anti Flag podcast, so if you guys do want to check it out, Anti Flag actually hosts that uh, that podcast, which I thought was really cool, really creative, really awesome. Although it is specifically on its own like platform, <laughs> so uh-huh. we couldn't really, you know. Uh, can't really Did you guys ever listen to any bands on their label? Uh, on AF, AF AF Records? Yeah, yeah, a few. Not not a lot though. Dude, there's some really good. Like some of their older. I haven't listened to any of them recently, but some of their bands were really good. Some of the bands were amazing that were on there. But like I said, it's it's been a it's been a quick. I want to say the Void was on there. Was the Void on there? I think they had. I think so. The or Void really, or the Voids? Void, the Voids. The Voids. The voids okay. I'm sorry. It's okay. Um, so I was like, Void? Void was on the Oh, there? Spanish Love Songs is off of there. I didn't know that. They used mm-hmm. to be. But there was another band we saw that night. But, yeah, yeah. There's a... Yeah. It was... Oh! That... If I took the stage with a little bit of the... The, uh... Four Horsemen of the Apocalypse Horns. And then they came on and opened up with Girls on there. That's not from the show. This is not. This is from oh. Live in Long Beach, although it wouldn't have been. I, awesome. I, he came out differently. <laughs> he definitely <laughs> came out a lot differently to the song. Much further down. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to pull up the set list. You guys, this was a great, 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 great night. Starting off with Girls Not Grave, going into the Celluloid Gene. A really uh, love like winner. Endlessly, she said, which was a huge surprise that that made it in the set list. Paper Airplanes. Two songs from All Hollows EP. Mm-hmm. The Boy Who Destroyed the World, which I was really excited about. 
going into Beautiful Thieves, Miss Murder, but not closed out with Miss Murder, closed out with Total Immortal. Yeah. What did you guys, uh, Nando, what did you think of AFI? Well, I loved how they opened up with Girls Not Great because that's like the song that almost everybody knows. So they opened up with the radio hit, and that was really fun. Um, their sound was awesome, and I just liked it. I had a really, really good time. The vocals, oh my god, his vocals were just on point. It was just like clean. Yeah. So, oh my god, I, I uh, look, I was in a really bad spot. I couldn't see anything because I was so short. But, but nonetheless, it sounded amazing. Uh, and to what I could see, it looked amazing. Yeah. But uh, we'll get into that a little bit later. Chris. Yes. What did you think of AFI? Uh, they were good. Surprisingly, they were actually good. I kind of expected something a little different. And maybe it's because I've been, when you watch them live on. Um, like YouTube or something, the sound quality isn't always the best. I'm like, I was expecting it to sound like shit, I think. But no, hearing them, you could tell they kind of needed to get their sound down right. Uh, in the first song, I could tell, like, in Girls Not Great, they kind of started off a little weird. And I think their timing was off, too. Like, they just didn't start on time. But that happens with most bands. Um, in general, the whole concert, though, the volume was just too low. Well, yeah, that was one thing about the concert. But I actually kind of liked that. It was like that, like, I it didn't, didn't, like that. It didn't it wasn't blaring to the ear. I felt it was just really clean. There, but, but there's Chris, blaring, but if I could have a conversation with the person next to me, which I did, there's something wrong. Oh, that's true. And I was in the field, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Right. yeah. So. Enjoy a mission. Uh, yeah, I will admit that. And it might have sounded different from the, from the stands. I don't know. It might have been actually louder. Just because, well, wait, you know, it's, well, Chris, it wasn't a true empathy. We're, we're, no. we were, we were empathy talking, ish. We were talking about this. Why, why was it like that? It's all open. I noticed, like, Len Helen... There's at least stands and stuff and cement, and that probably bounces back the sound. There, we just had grandstands, and there's a small slope. Yep. And yeah. the grandstands, I don't think they're going to pro- bounce the sound back at all. Like It's just open space. Yes. And even th- and that's why it, it should have been blaring if it's like that. But because we're in Irvine, there's like condo or homes down the street. You know, it's... um. Yeah, that's probably why they do that because it's just super conservative, yeah, ridiculous I, area. I, I, Rich area. <laughs> it's true because, like, <laughs> yeah, technically they have, like you said, they did, they have a sound ordinance. I think it's like ten or ten thirty, but uh, that's always what happened when you would go to the Irvine Spectrum. I th- no, not the Irvine Spectrum. The Irvine Amphitheater. Now it's switching over to you know less than a mile away, which is at five points, which is where we saw yeah saw the concert. But yeah, you know what? I agree. It was just very. You're right now I'm thinking of shows at the Spectrum, how they were. Like. It was very empty. But I will say this. What was nice is if you were on the outside of, like, the actual concert hall area, you could still hear everything pretty crisp and clean. Mm-hmm. And it didn't sound like a gnarly echo that was just, like, in nothing. Like, if you weren't that inside That is true. The venue, I was in the you, parking lot and it yeah, sounded good. and it sounded good. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, normally you hear this weird, like, <laughs> reverb. Yeah, it's it, true. It's like the a, a bounce. Like a, You're mm-hmm. just like, wait, what? Wait, what? What song are they playing? Because it sounds like you're saying, oh, 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 and you're like, what? What's going on? But yeah, uh, I will say this. I, I love, I love, love, love AFI. I love it. I love it just like you guys love it. And I get it that we all have this love for AFI. But man, it, it, if there was a moment that I just felt like it's bad to be an AFI fan. It was there. Oh. And I always feel like that what? every time I go to a Why? concert. Because I never, get, I never get to enjoy them. The way, like, perfect example. That's because you were in the, you try to get to the front. That's why. Yeah, but that's, that's my other issue is, perfect example, for Comeback Kid and H2O, uh, the hardcore scene's so nice to the point where, like, if they see me, what? like, they see me going to the front. <laughs> I get to like, they're like, oh, short guy. Since let him, when? Let him go to the front. Every single time. And I literally just use the example right now that for a comeback kid in H2O, I could have walked up to the front. And they know, short guy, let him up front. I'm obviously taller than him. I'm going to gonna let him be there. But every which way I went to try to get to the front for AFI, even prior, even for like before anti Everyone knows stuff, you got to get there really early to get in the front. Really early, for, or you stage, you stage dive, you crowd surf for any AFI concert. It's been like that for front. years. Like can't crowd people surf to the front. line up at the AFI concert just to get in the front. They're not going to give it up for you just because you're small. Yeah, but my thing is, <laughs> you know, you, right? these, like, my thing is, there's only two bands that have affected me this way. Mm-hmm. That's AFI and Touche Mori. Those are the only two bands. One that, is like, clearly more iconic. Th- that's not the point. The point <laughs> know, is right? that the fans like. The fans but isn't just, it, they don't know the, the fans just don't let me go to the front, dude. And it's ridiculous. Like I, I get, look, man, if I wasn't five foot one, 
like, and I was some like six foot three dude going to the front and trying to block and obstruct. Like, like, can we just have a golden rule where like shortest go up front, tallest go to the back, and we just slowly but surely go up? No. There's your a, amphitheater. This slope. isn't a wedding picture. There's your amphitheater yeah. slope. <laughs> this isn't a it's wedding. Getting picture, all like, the crowd to just you're not like, going to have order AT&T in a concert. Bar it. You're not gonna. But man, look, I lo- love the music. Just I hate, I hate the crowd. I hate it. I hate it so bad. That's why I mean, when I'm young, when I was young, I used to be able to hang out in the front and in the middle of the crowd. Now it's like it is it does get a little tedious. And it's yeah. like you're up against all these bodies. I was in the pit for Rise Against and stuff. I was like near there and in yeah. the pit for a little bit. And then after a while, it was fun. But after a while, it's like man, like I want I want to be here because it's like where the, I could see them the best and it sounds the best. But man, there's all these people next to me and it's yeah. like, yeah. all right, just keep stop talking, <laughs> 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 just keep going through the songs like keep bringing it and then they played like well i guess we'll get to that later but that how many acoustic songs they played but. yeah did that you stay for all of it i stayed for all oh of it. my okay, god we'll okay get into that. Yeah, we'll get it. but yeah. i will say this uh there was people messaging me through through the podcast uh the instagram and they're like dude you should have yelled for me i was up front i would have pulled you up and i was like man like i could have if i would have but mm-hmm. there was just there was just no way and the, the worst thing was was that the barricade actually added more height Mm-hmm. So anybody that was already five foot bump up to like five foot four. So now these six foot one guys that are in front of me are now bumped up to like six foot five. So I'm like, yeah, this isn't this isn't going to happen, man. But I, I'm telling you, every other show I've ever been to, doesn't matter who it is, I'm able to get up front. Like, it's just like this golden rule. Let the midget see. And it seems like AFI is the only one. And actually, I told Nando, too. I was like, there was a reason I wanted to get there, like, right when the door is open. Right when the door is yeah, open. Yeah, I got there before. It was Rise Against, too. Yeah. yeah. It wasn't yeah. just, you know, AFI. It was Rise Against, too. But so mean, everyone wants to be up front. You know, even before AFI, it's like they're going to be there parked there the whole show just, yeah. to, just to make sure they have a spot. Yeah, you're right, because that's what happened when we went to go see uh, AFI. It's hard. It's always been hard. For me, it's always been hard. When I went to go get, see right AFI to over at uh, at the Vegas show. House of Blues, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's when, you know, there was... I, I told everybody, hey, man, like, I just want to get up front for, for Touche More, and I, I'll get up front for that, and, you know, I'll move back so you can have AFI in front of you. And it all... It, Everybody was nice other than this Jade lookalike kid that was like 15 and directly in front of me. And he just like, he was like, no, I'm not having it. So I had to stand behind him trying to go crazy for Touche Mori, which is really hard because this dude's a statue. Yeah. Then on top of it for AFI, I'm going crazy and this dude's still a statue. Oh, that's and the then worst. he heard Miss Murder, got excited and left. And I was like, you dick. Wow. Like, really? This was, this was the moment? This is what you were waiting for? You paid... How much money in the sold was so the show was sold out? You know, just to enjoy Miss Murder, <laughs> and you know, and I'm sure there's gonna be listeners like, what's wrong with that? They paid their ticket, they got the right, and you may be right, but at the same time, it was just like, come on, man, like somebody else totally would have really enjoyed this if you know, if you really you should have gotten there earlier. Yeah. <laughs> Apparently, uh, moral of the story. That's honestly, no. yeah. There's people that wait there for hours. You know, I can't like they're gonna give their spot. No. I get it. I totally get it. But I'm short. That I have doesn't a matter, handicap. dude. Get there early. I have a handicap. <laughs> I have a handicap. No. How dare you, Nando? Shut up. You've you've been grateful that I've gotten up to the front. You're like, you're up to the front, and then I freaking pull you up. So you shut up. You've been <laughs> you've been <laughs> very grateful. The only way I can try handicap. to get the, the closest I ever get is like a few people back. And I have to wedge my way in there, and it's yeah. like you have to go through people. I'm pretty good at that though. But but dude, <laughs> but I always end up getting trapped. You just got to go sideways. Everywhere I go. Like, everywhere I go, dude. Everywhere I go. I always end up getting trapped. Well, that's a problem. Every, I mean, it, it, once it, you get in there, how do you get out? <laughs> it's harder to well, get out. Yeah, yeah, exactly. In fact, no, but even then, at the last, at the AFI show prior to this, I'm like, yo, throw me up. Throw me up. I need to crowd surf. And they just looked at me like I No was, one does that stuff anymore, like, man. Like, it's crazy. Oh, what? Did you see how Anti Flag was trying to get people to crowd surf? Yeah. No one crowd surfed at the show. I don't like, think people know how to crowd no surf anymore. People. Two people. The security doesn't even do anything anymore. I don't know, man. We and did you to- notice how they were telling us about, like, they had these weird warnings about, like, if something happens at the event, blah, blah, blah. Did you remember those? Like, those weird warnings? Yeah, yeah they had it all. And, like, all notice where the up. exits are. And I'm, I'm as we're walking out the exits, I'm, I, I start talking to this lady. I'm like, you know what? If something actually happens, I'm not going through here. Like, yeah. I'm not going through here. And she's, like, looking at her. She's like, oh, you're, you're right. Because we're just funneling out into this one, in these two spots. And everyone's bottlenecking. And they're like, this is a killing field. Like, 
So I'm going to the stage. I'm going backstage. <laughs> Something happens. Anyways, I'm bum stopping. rushing and hanging out with all Anyway, people. yeah. Notice where the exits are because you're not going to be using them. <laughs> Yeah, it was. Uh, it, That's besides the point, though. Like I said, dude, it just felt very. Uh, I don't know. I I don't know. It didn't. It didn't feel. It's not as in AFI shows are not new. Musically, it's very the scene, enjoyable. The everything scene is, is more not nearly, Yeah, it's but not they're only, more mainstream too. So not only that, but it just it doesn't feel. It just it doesn't feel good to me. And think about where they're musically they're going. Is that like crowd state or crowd surfing type of music? You know, like. Well, that's Musically, the thing, like, is that, like, but then Rise Against, I guess, kind of is. But maybe it's just I don't know. still going to like hardcore shows and like punk that shows. High like, energy. That exactly. You want high energy. Yeah, you want high me, energy. Yeah. I want to see people moving, jumping around. I mean, there used to be videos of everyone moving. Yeah, dude. exactly. I used to, that's why I remember shows being like every like the like the pits getting so big you couldn't like you had to either be in there or you're against like the wall like yeah. so big like it, it encompassed like the whole room. Yeah. Like, see, for I me, mean, it's I like, remember even going to, like see Flog and Molly, and even the pit was so huge. Yeah, I've seen Flog and Molly. I don't. I know. Or the but crowd even, is in, the crowd's just going nuts because they're like singing all the songs. They're 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 all into it. But like, but even more so, even when you get into the pit, like your butt to like your butt to nuts. So you're just slowly like going around. <laughs> it's yeah. like molasses speed. You're just like <laughs> yeah, because it's but, so but, at the House but, of Blues. It's so, so bad. People, like, <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. Nando, you were gonna say something. Else. I already forgot. Oh, come on, dude. You should eat that it was sushi. About, it was about AFI. Yeah, yeah. I know. I, I, it's like prime, right? You know, you're only gonna pass it. Let's not get into that. Sorry. No, I was like remembering it. And then I'm I not sorry because it, it's sushi. I was remembering that I forgot something about what are you talking about? We were talking about crowd surfing, about stage yeah, yeah, diving, and, we're and talking the about, high energy. And oh, yeah, yeah. To me, it's like a band's really good when I don't know them. They have a high enough energy where yes. I can participate. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Where I feel like, okay, it's okay to do these things because everyone else is like, is doing, doing it. If yeah. they're, the band's doing it, the crowd's doing, doing it, it, then it feels good. You know what I mean? don't need to know them. I just feel in the music. Yeah, and just... exactly. And that's why I like is I like being able to participate when even if I don't know them. That's the kind of energy that band it brings. Mm-hmm. Is, that, is that what you felt like with, with AFI? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I felt like I could have gone in there, but I didn't. <laughs> uh, yeah, you know what? I, I felt like I sh- probably should have jumped in the pit for Boys, Boy Who Destroyed the World, but I was so excited. I like literally looked at the guy to the right of me. I was like, "Life complete," because that's one of the checklist songs that like I need to hear from oh, AFI. Nice. I've heard, I think I've heard all of them. There's only a few that like I don't think. Oh, oops. I don't think I'll be able to hear it in my in my lifetime. It's okay. Speaking of that, Chris, do you have any do you have any songs that you're like, man, I'll never fucking hear this from them? Yeah, there's a bunch of I'll never hear from them, but um, yeah, I can name a bunch I'll never hear. But there's a lot of heard. I've I've I mean, I was fortunate enough to see them in the years that I have seen them, and I have seen a lot of their stuff that I know they won't play again. So, like when I heard Coin Return, I was like, oh my god. Yeah, that's one of them. Yeah, I got. To I've seen that. it once, I think. Yeah. Yeah, and it's just like, holy shit. Let it be broke. I think I've seen. You got to let it be broke. I think, you know, my, my, you know, I think I like it's been a long time, and I've seen them. I think I told them that was my tenth time seeing them. Yeah. So and I start the first time I saw them was in two thousand and two, I believe two thousand one two thousand one. So in that span of time, seventeen years, it's hard to remember what I. <laughs> yeah. I have to go back and look at all the set lists, and then you know. Yeah. Yeah. But fall children, that's one I know they probably don't play that often anymore. It's a great song. Um, I agree. And the same thing with me. I was like, no, I want to see Fall Children, but unfortunately, that didn't happen either. But, but a lot of their B-sides, like Dream of Waking, Lower It, I mean, a lot of their stuff, the older stuff, I would just love to hear it. Like, oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. But, nonetheless, we also saw Rise Against. So, what did you guys think of the... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you thought okay, he was so, drunk. So, okay, hold on. Ahead, so, Chris and I had two completely different experiences. Actually, uh, Sort Nando of, but I, I started thinking about it. It's possible. Nando and I had it's an possible. experience, and Chris had a certain experience. Mm-hmm. Yes. Chris, I'm going to let you take the wing and have your experience first. Uh, well, I thought Rise Against was really good. Um, I thought they sound, he, I thought they sounded pretty clean. He did mess up in singing certain parts, and Matt, Matt will talk about why later. I think it's because he's just sort of out of air, or he's just, I mean, he's the end of the tour, and he's just sort of drawn out. That's what I was um, thinking. And it was a relentless set. Um I, in general, I thought it was really fun, really good. Uh, the crowd was really good for Rise Against. Um, the pit was pretty good for Rise Against. Uh, there was a lot of people in it at certain points, and like, I mean, it's just for the other bands, no one really like pitted as hard or anything. So it was kind of cool to see that. Um, yeah, uh, a long set they played, a really long set, and in the middle there was a bunch of acoustic songs, which was kind of cool and kind of not cool because it brought down the energy. 
And then Tim was just, I felt like it just became his band. It's just him singing, like a sing-along. And I thought that was kind of weak, because I'm like, I kind of came here to, I mean, everyone is entitled to their opinion, just for me, I'd rather, I mean, just play a couple acoustic songs and get off the, get off the stage, you know? Yeah. Well, I want to see some, it would have been nicer to hear some of your older stuff. Um, but I you understand mean, that's you, way, you mean older that's stuff? preference, that's, a, that's a, as a preference. Older stuff that aren't uh, revived into an acoustic version it's, of it? Even that too, <laughs> stuff like that too, and I, I get it. And he's like, and he, even before he came out, he's like, yeah, we... We were turning songs into acoustic songs. I'm like, really? Like, is this that hard? Like, you don't songwrite with an acoustic sometimes? <laughs> like, but whatever. He's, I mean, the way he said it, I was just like, really? But now that I think about it, like, who doesn't do that? But okay. Because they write in, like, ma- you know, within, uh, in major or, or minor key, right? So they're using those scales. It's going to be, you can write, you can easily translate to acoustic, I think. You know what I mean? It'll sound, still sound good. Anyways, what did you guys think? Well, <laughs> so basically, Nando and I were standing in the back left-hand side of the uh, of the amphitheater. And when they first started, I was like, looked at Nando, I'm like, they're off, aren't they? Like, the guitar is not, something's not the sound, right. The yeah, it didn't weird. feel like it fit together. And then even that, like, the vocals were on, like, one tempo. The guitars were on one tempo. I think the bass and the drums were together. I think they were in sync. I think so. I think the bass is really on So on I was point like, that's point. weird. And it got to the and point the where drums. about two songs in, I'm like, I go, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Drums are in. One, two, three, four. One. The guitar's not on. The guitar's not fucking on. And, and Nando's like, he's confused as to what's happening. He's like, why does it sound like that? Because there was a, the one song for sure I knew sounded way off. It was Help Is On The Way. That one, it's kind of like, like he was kind of rushing that song. If you can, can you find that song? Of course I can. Yes. Yeah, this is a great song that you're playing. Oh, this, yes. This is, yeah. they, they, thought, but that also is a good song. Yeah, but they, that was one thing I was happy with, with the set list, was that they were able, they played a lot of songs I wanted to hear. Yeah, they, they, they played all their, they played a lot of their, I gotta admit, it was a great set, because yeah. their singles, they're, they have so many, they're so good. Like, they're really yeah. good live. Like, yeah. You, you know what it felt like? Was on the way. It felt like the guitar, the guitar... The, the Tim, the guitar, and both the guitars, maybe even the bass at times were trying to almost like, like, oh, like, ru- like, like, anti flag, like, let's play it faster, let's jump around. They're trying to force the something. tempo. Yeah, and They're the drummer's just kind of looking around like, what the fuck are you doing? Like, this is not, this is not the tempo. This is, this is the song. So it felt like while the, I've while, learned, while the just, band's you gotta play trying everyone to push else, it, you can't force the tempo. Yeah, while the band's trying to push it. The, uh, I mean, uh, while the while the forgetting while, <laughs> while everybody else is trying to push it, the front men, the drummers just like, no, like this is this is the tempo. Stop, stop, stop. So it, it felt like that for you guys had a more back view and you probably heard it better because yeah. everyone around me is singing the songs too. I'm singing the songs yeah. and I'm like getting into trying to get into but it. But even you know then, I mean? like, you had you had Tim doing weird things on the main screen. If you were paying attention, he'd be like. Help me lay on the way. I was like, why is His he, tongue why was is like he the rocking it? He so what do you like, think was... If you're some man. I was like, what is what, what is this? I mean, it's just the way he is. He's just, no, I've, I've never, never seen, seen him, him do that. Never. Never. Mm-hmm. So what never. did you think was the wrong with him? He was on cocaine, man. <laughs> he need, The only thing he needed to do is do this, and that was it. I swear to God, he is like... Re- he was like receiving his lips like a weird, like not even a grin. It was just like... So and he was okay. doing weird things with his tongue, and he was mumbling, I will say, he was mumbling fucking lyrics at it, times. From my experience, uh, <laughs> not cocaine, I will say not that I've tried, like but that I've seen people doing it. Um, yeah, he kind of now like that's what I, you said he was drunk. Yeah, originally I thought, and he then was I drunk. started thinking originally about it. I'm like, well, I'm trying to think about like why he would have been like he didn't seem weird to me, but he was a little off. It, or they were a little off, a little like not there. It seemed like, yeah. you know what I mean? Yes. And I thought, yes. That, and that's what I thought. So I'm like, oh, yes. it's like cocaine. Like, you, it's like you're you're into it. You're sweating a lot, and you're into it, but no one's like on the same page. And like, <laughs> yeah. But here's yeah. what was, his speeches were a little weird too. He's all like, yeah. oh, this one's for AFI. It's called Help Is On The Way. And I was like, wait, what? It wasn't even that song. But they're like yeah. dedicated weird songs that like. This song's about rape, and uh, we're dedicating it to anti-flag. Thanks for coming on tour with us. And I was like, <laughs> what? Like, this is the song you want to dedicate to people? That's a little weird. All right, whatever. Yeah. The dedications were a little weak from, yeah. from them. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, 
You, I mean, I don't know if I were them, I'd really pay homage to band to both those bands because they're way older than Rise Against. Oh, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, I think they noticed that. It's like they did not a little bit. Yeah, they did. yeah. Like they've been playing Especially way before. Yeah, yeah, and like, like we've been playing. They've been playing way before we were even a band, and we respect them. Blah 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 blah. Yeah, he said something like that. But yeah, um, I just figured like I don't know. Yeah. So with that being just me, yeah. with that being said, Nando and I were uh, right when the acoustic started. I'm like. Here's the rest of the set list. They've been playing the set list that I created to a T. Other than one or two songs were switched. I go, do you guys just want to get the fuck out of here? And they were like, yeah, let's just go. So we once it got like uh, two songs into the acoustic set list, which I might add, was like 20 minutes. It felt longer than that, dude. 20 to 25 long. minutes of acoustic. It's like five songs, four or five songs. And that that's like three or four minutes. And each, he was man. he would take a break between each one. <laughs> he would just like I don't know, like it was a little deep. He dragged on. I was like, okay, but I just kind of was like, all right, this is what it turned into. And then what? And then the <laughs> and last. Then he tried to pick up the band again. Yeah, it's yeah. Like, and all the right, last like, two songs, they're like high energy, and then we end. It's like ah. Uh, yeah, the no, flow no, no, no. was disturbed. really bad flow. Really bad flow. I had a horrible experience watching Rides Against this time. They right? were still good, I thought. Though. Yeah, I, was, I saw I, it a good enough time, was, but yeah. just not yeah. what I expected. Yeah, you know what? They um, might have been on something. I right. saw them with. Uh, <laughs> but it's a very clean show. I think like AFI. They don't do well, anything. They're and I flag yeah, they're, they're doesn't do anything. Supposedly like, straight edge. Yeah, and, 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 and so and, and, and like so is Rides Against. Yeah. Well, actually, no. I heard. Now here's a funny thing. I don't. Know I don't if think they were always straight edge. Like they didn't claim straight edge back in the day. I know that for sure. I don't. I don't. I so, actually just heard from one. Well, of no the, one does usually. From one of the uh, one of the fans in the crowd, mm-hmm. uh, apparently a- Adam is not straight edge, and I did not from AFI. Him. Yes. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. I guess. Uh, I think he'd be the only one that wouldn't be straight edge. I think the rest are. Maybe Hunter's grown out of it. I feel like no one will say anything to Adam either. It's just kind of like, well, that's just Adam. Well, mm-hmm. just let live. He's cool. Like, yeah. Yeah, yeah. He's ch- cool, chill. He's not along. obnoxious. I'm sure even when he drinks, he's just kind of quiet and probably still the same person that he kind of is. They probably like him when he's drinking. <laughs> but I hear that. <laughs> right? Like, he's like, oh, Adam, you got a personality. They're like, look at him all drunk and fooled. Do you remember that Friends episode? I think it's like Monica's boyfriend. Like, he has a drinking problem. He's always drinking, but he's always like really lively and he stops drinking. He's just like bland. No. Maybe he's, maybe he's like that. You could talk to Nando about it. I believe he's <laughs> conquered the entire Friends uh, series. Yes, I have, but it's been a minute. Okay, so. we'll, we'll talk about that later. But yeah, we'll create, Friends we'll podcast? Another podcast. A, yeah, I was about to say. We See, no one told you this podcast would be so lame. <laughs> Friends go, isn't lame. Mm, questionable. <laughs> Friends is. Uh, so overall. It's America's show. How was your guys' experience at uh, the Morning in America tour? Uh, seven and a half out of ten. Yeah, that's a, that's a good. That's a, <laughs> that is a good yeah, rating, I, I, actually. You know that's a good yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Even well, though I had fun uh, and I liked it, yeah, that's a good. Like rating. that's like over like across the board. It's a hard C. Yeah, because considering considering there was only three bands. Yeah, it, it was that much money. I felt like if I said should have been longer. I, there should have been openers. Yeah. Yeah. It was just a. It was just. A, it was solid, but it wasn't anything like crazy mm-hmm. i mean even if i would have been in there and i love rise against i love all their songs i knew most of them on the set list i was singing long in the back i was up there jumping around but it was just still like okay that was cool mm-hmm. it wasn't most anything more, yeah most definitely yeah, still had a great how, how would you rate afi uh the crowd or the or the or just the, the, the overall experience my overall experience for I, afi just for afi just for afi it would have probably still hit a c because i wasn't able to truly enjoy it but their performance and musically mm-hmm. that they're 10 out of 10 10 out of 10 i don't i i don't i don't recall the message okay as the, per, the performance gray, I, yeah. I i can i think their sound was off i mean that was throwing them off um it's probably in their monitors too so in their first song, it's hard to groove. Well, you know yeah, I mean? like, especially it's hard, it's like they have all the stuff like in their ears, anyways. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so, that's like, true. That, luckily, that the, if you get the levels, yeah, right, you have yeah, to get yeah. matched levels. And I'm sure for the last band just went on, they didn't really sound check much. At least we no. didn't hear. They might have done it for them in their monitor in their ear monitors. Yeah, yeah. But um, you're right, their performance is really good, and I would give them on their performance on at least a nine, yeah, or ten out of ten. Yeah, it yeah. was really good. It was just dude, and we got and Dan- I can't blame them for the sound or what you know what I mean. No. No. Yeah. We got that. We got Davy in the crowd during freaking oh, Total yeah. Immortal. I mean, I got to hear fucking Boy Who Destroyed the World. I got to hear what technically I didn't realize I was into AFI, but I love seeing Rodney Mullen skate and fucking Tony Hawk Three. <laughs> and what did he skate to? Boy Who Destroyed the World, you, man. I remember you said yes. why they should have played Fall Children, but you know, more people know those songs though. 
but fall children man fall children, they're still they the, the rose i know they would have um, been great it would have been epic whoa. when i when i first saw them they opened with fall children mm. you lucky bastard and that yeah it's the only time yeah they stopped doing that i hate <laughs> you i hate you so much well, you guys, make sure to head to rattus.net. Click on the Pop Funko link, man, and get yourself a Pop Funko. That's it for this particular episode. You're like, wait, what? No song? I thought you guys were supposed to be reviewing the songs. Yeah, but you know what? We all went to the tour just for you guys. We even got to take some pictures with some of you guys, which was awesome. Thank you so much for uh, recognizing some of us from the podcast. We really do appreciate it. But yeah, we're going to go ahead. We're going to continue on and keeping on uh, this particular uh, next, I guess, three episodes is back into Black Sails and the Sunset. That means we're done. Black Sails can no longer be aired on MFI. Did you guys ever think we would get to this point where, like, we, we haven't done every song? Where uh, after these three, that's it. It's the whole album. We did all twelve songs. How do we... we've done this three times? Yeah, this is the oh, third wow. time around. Did you ever think we did? You I ever thought we only did this the second time around. But you're yeah, right. This, this is, is the third. Wait, what are you talking about? So what do we have left? Like so we, now? So this is the first official Midnight album that's Sun? been completely conquered. Oh, oh, wow. for the for the podcast, Midnight Sun. I don't believe so. So that might be the next song that we're jumping into. But yeah, that's it. We're conquered. We're dead. We're done. No more black sales ever again, dude. Wow. You have to go back to the catalog now. Yeah. You can do B sides. <laughs> I mean, we still live like, recording. We still we still haven't even touched Crash Love at all, you guys. I know. I that. know. Ah, oh, good. Times. It'll probably be next. Yeah. Well, you guys, I'm your host I'm TR, and as always, Chris Nano Carizian. Till next time, you guys. Keep the flame alive. Later.